بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحباب we were talking about and discussing the desires al hawa from the perspective of Ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah ta'ala, and mentioning, we mentioned the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, dunya sijinu mu'min wa jannatul kafir. That this life is the prison of the believer and the paradise of the disbeliever. And that's because they're able, when someone disbelieves, then they basically have no boundaries that they define their own boundaries and so people in disbelief they have different levels of boundaries even accordance in accordance if someone may disbelieve but yet they have religious principles or they have some sense of morality or what have you so then they go in accordance with the boundaries that they believe in or they have set And similarly, the person who has no or very little morality, that they follow their desires in everything, which seems to be a widespread trend around the world where the people believe, they believe everyone accepts that life is short. So some of the people believe in indulging in everything, that they have a short life. So they believe in indulging in every type of falsehood anything in accordance with their desires if they feel like sleeping with many people in one evening then this is what they'll do regardless of whether they're man or woman well, the women take the same mentality as many of the men have in following their desires so it has become commonplace and not even shameful to many of the people for a woman to have many men and many other women even so Ayul Ahbab, Islam gives us a boundary. And the Hawa is something which is regulated by Kitab Allah wa Sunnatul Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ibn Jawzi, in speaking about the desires, he said, when he talked about, he made a similitude about the desires. He said, the similitude of Hawa is that of an ignorant boy and a gluttonous, sick person. For this reason, when the mind perceives something that differs to the Hoa's inclination, a wise and reasonable person should then consult his mind, particularly as he is aware that it is knowledgeable as well sincere in its advice. He should be patient upon what the mind orders him to do, because knowing the excellence of the mind is enough for him to favor it. Further, if he needs additional proof of the uprightness of the mind's decision, he should contemplate the consequences of following his hoa, such as scandalous exposure in front of people, vilification, missing virtues and good deeds, for this glory has ever deteriorated. Honor has been disgraced and humiliated or a bird hunted except as a result of following Hawa? Ayul Ahbab Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala here was discussing and making a similitude, a similitude uh, regarding the person who follows their lowly desires. And as we mentioned before, that you following your desires in its absoluteness or in and of itself, desires are not negative. Meaning that there are desires within the context of the Sharia. But Hawa, as Ibn, uh, Ibn Jawzi is explaining, he's referring to the negative, to that in which where a person is following their vain desires, only their lower desires, not in the context of sexuality and the marital bond and what have you, but rather just following their vain desires. And the consequence, and by not analyzing the consequences of 
the actions that you are about to do, the sin that you're about to indulge in, the desires you're about to follow, if instead you use your intellect to begin to harness your desires, then this will be of good for you. But if you leave your desires to just run amok, then this can be your destruction. And he mentioned some of the side effects of this. He said the consequences of following uh, a person's desires can be scandalous exposure in front of the people. So think about it. A person who's known to be upright in the community, when the people find out that this person has committed adultery or fornication or this person uh, does whatever act, this takes away from their status in the community, their honor. The people will look at them in a another light. So they will be considered scandalous in the community. And I want to take this time to point out something that unfortunately we face more so in our, our communities. That when we have people of knowledge, as the people, a person of knowledge, meaning is a student of knowledge, a da'i, someone who's calling to the Quran and the Sunnah, or, or they're supposedly, uh, you know, considered a, a sheikh or whatever the situation is. A person of knowledge, that they have other standards that they have to live by compared to the average person. That when they do something, the people, they will be under greater scrutiny. Because the people see them in a higher light. So, for example, when we have, which we've had in countless times, of many people who are, people who were, uh, known for being people of knowledge and du'at who were getting caught doing zina. It became public that they had committed uh, either fornication or some sort of adultery or, or were known for pornography or whatever. That this causes them to be lowered in the standards of the people, which rightfully they should be. Because here they're calling people, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَتَأْمَرُونَ النَّاسُ بِالْبِرْ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he's talking about Bani Israel, he said, uh, do you command the people to the good, and you forget yourselves, and you are reading the book? Letting us know that, that hypocrisy of being scandalous in our behavior and at the same time commanding people to avoid scandal is a, cri a, a extreme crime to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَبْرَ مَقْتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ أَنْ تَقُولُوا مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is great, it's a great crime in the sight of Allah to do, to not practice that which you are saying. So Ayat Ahbab Hawa can cause scandal. And relevant to this is that the Arabs, for example, in, in talking to some of the scholars, what they mention when they mention about this act of, of zina and so forth, that in our society we see it a lot less because we have many people who are have been known for scandals with the opposite sex who still give a lot of dawah and the people still hold them in high esteem and perhaps in our society we still need them even though they're committing these they're not setting the best of examples but maybe they have some knowledge and it's still beneficial to gain some knowledge from them but they're really not a good example for our children and our our, our families and may Allah forgive us and them Amin. but amongst the Arabs especially and especially the Salihin amongst the scholars, that is one of the greatest things you could do, one of the greatest crimes you could commit is for a scholar. I mean, if you were to hear one of our great Mashaikh, we were to hear something like that, you, it would be, for us, coming from the West, it would be devastating enough, but especially in those societies, they could probably never give a talk again. It would just be like, like the whole world... Uh, fell uh, fell down, and this shows you because that is such a great part of honor. They look that uh, being away from adultery and fornication and those kind of crimes, those kind of uh, actions and sins, is uh, considered a given, especially amongst people of knowledge. 
And to fall into that is like one of the greatest crimes you could almost commit. So it is, it's a person falling from a great high status, just dropping off the face of the earth. They couldn't show their face again. It's so serious. So Hawa can lead to your being disgraced. Ibn Josie also mentioned Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He also said that it also uh, leads to vilification. So the people will begin to vilify you. And how much on the internet have we seen certain du'a that have fell, fallen to sin? Or maybe we don't even know some of it, some of the things that may or may not be true, but people vilify them. That that stigma will never leave them. And likewise, he mentioned another thing is that it also the hoa makes the person miss doing the good deeds. Because of course, if you're busy with drinking alcohol or, or, or whatever, going to the club and stuff, you're not going to be busy and focus on good deeds. Even if you did good deeds before that, even if you prayed and then you went to the club 30 minutes after or an hour after, the sister that was in the masjid and wearing hijab, and then two hours later, because it's now it's 9 o'clock, the club's opening up, she has makeup on and hair's out and everything and going to the club. No doubt, not only has she committed those major sins and no longer wearing hijab and the muharramat and the perfume and so forth and being cursed as the Prophet ﷺ said, but now by following her desires, she's missing the good deeds of course. She's missing good deeds. She could be praying in the night, but instead she's on the dance floor. Ayol Ahbab, our desires and the consequences of our desires are very serious and we must strive our best to avoid uh, following our vain desires. And may Allah bless us with ikhlas with habat and help us in that. And may Allah forgive us of our many sins and bless us to go forward as a community. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.